The Quran we have today is not a fixed text that existed at the time of Uthman as the standard Islamic narrative claims. The hidden text of the Sana Palimpsest reveals the truth that lies underneath this claim. Today we are going to highlight a manuscript that we gave you a brief overview about last time, which is the Sana manuscript, and today we're calling it the Sana Palimpsest intentionally, and we are going to share more about why we are referring to it as the Sana Palimpsest. Of course, with me here to unpack all of that for us is Dr. J. Smith. Dr. J., uh, you know, I, I know why it's called Sana Palimpsest. I'm studying one of those uh, basically sections of this manuscript from my own uh, research and PhD studies. But if you would like just to uh, give our viewers a brief background about why this particular one is called the Palimpsest. Well, let's just go ahead and look at the slide. Uh, when we look at the slide, we'll see it right here. Uh, you can see it. This is under ultraviolet light, and you can see that right. there is the, the uh, a, a a bleeding area uh, air, uh, uh, script that's coming through, and you notice that the alephs are going the same direction, which means it's a lower text. This is not the other side of the yeah, page. Yeah. So the light blue is the lower text. Is the, the lower text. Dark is the upper text. Is the upper text. And that's why if you're able, if you you put it under ultraviolet light, you can pull the two away from each other and read them side by side. And I have copies of both separated like this. Yes, the upper fact, text by itself and the lower text by itself. And we can do a whole series on that. I've done, I've got them on my slides too. We're just running out of time since we want to keep these from eight to 10 minutes. So we're not going to do that for these right, cases. Right. But certainly we could do that in future episodes. We need to do that. But what's interesting, Asma Hilali is the one who's probably the most famous for, uh, for coming out with her study on it. Mm -hmm. And she... Uh, looks at this and her conclusion is that these are nothing more than school texts. Now, right, they were for practice. Well, I mean, uh, Dr. Hilali, wonderful, wonderful scholar, by the way. And uh, again, she, she has her own conclusions. She's entitled to her own conclusion, which uh, I want to say, sadly, she was also attacked for that conclusion for, for no apparent reason, to be honest. But all that to say is that her conclusion was the reason why you see the lower text and it has a number of corrections that are done to it, which is Elizabeth Poen highlighted that, uh, that the process at some point has to be stopped, washed off. And she said it was part of a school where you're training maybe scribes to write, and they were making mistakes. So that's basically what she meant by that. Now, there's some good reasons why people were criticizing her. One very good reason, let's look at the next slide, is take a look and see what we have found. Really what we're talking about are 63 verses. That's all we're talking about, 63 verses. But when you look at the 63 verses, there are 70 variants there. 70 different difference between the lower and the upper text. We're just talking about the lower and the upper text. There are verbs and nouns 25 times. You have different verbs and nouns 25 times. You have articles, participles, conjunctions that are different. Prepositions, isolated letters, 29 times where you see these instances as, far, as well as expressions. Entire sentences are different. 16 times where entire sentences are different. Some overlap within the same verse. And this cannot be a school text for one very simply reason. simple reason. Well, let me just give you a number of reasons. Now, first and foremost, and Shoemaker gets into this, and Shoemaker really confronts this. He says, first and foremost, you would not give parchment to students. These are very expensive. Right. Listen, when you just the, uh, a, a regular manuscript, let, let's look at the Sinaiticus. It's probably the most famous one that we have in the British Library. The Sinaiticus, just that one manuscript of the New and the Old Testament, where it took 62 different deerskins to make that text. You don't, no one who is, uh, you, you, no one who is poor, first of all, as students are, would have access to that kind of, that kind of finances. More than that, if you do have access to that kind of finances, you're not going to give it to a student who's going to make mistakes. You only use parchments because they're so expensive when it's the final area. What is interesting is, and this is what Shoemaker points out, when you look at the script and you see these changes, this is not instructions to a student. This is instructions on how to read it because this is liturgy. This is liturgy. Ooh, well, we know what that, where that liturgy comes from. So let's look and see what he says. Um, Dorosh and Sadegi and Bergman say this, the upper text of this manuscript is also Quranic, which Dorosh dates to just before the middle of the 8th century, so mid-700s. 
According to Shoemaker, the original Quranic text of the Sana manuscripts, erased lower writing, is a non-standard version of the Quran that deviates regularly from the received version now identified as the Uthmanic Quran. As such, it is an extremely rare, although not unique, witness to the diverse ways with which the Quran continued to circulate still at the end of the 7th century. So he's very clear that this is an official text. This is not a student that's doing this. This is one of those deviations mm -hmm. that Al-Hajjaj Al and Malik had to finally bring together into one text. Uh, Shoemaker continues on in page 77, what we have in the undertext of the Son of Palimpsest is a witness to a different early version of the Quran. Once the, what he calls in quotes, Uthmanic text had achieved dominance, it was erased and replaced with the canonical Maliki Hajjaj version in the middle of the 8th century, or he would say early to middle 8th century. Doroche agrees with this when he says it would appear, according to Doroche, François Doroche, that the non-canonical versions of the Quran, which still, which are, were still being produced as late as 700 CE, and were only eliminated eventually through the efforts of Abdul Malik and Al Hajjaj to establish a particular version of the Quran as canonical. So this is one of those deviant texts. This is one of those variants. This is one of those what we're talking about. In fact, there's reference after reference. This is one of those that either is Ibn Masud's or Uba Ibn Ka or Ibn Musa, it could be even Zaid Ibn Thabit. Yeah, I mean, I, I did look at the, uh, those variations. I compared it to Ibn Masoud, for instance, Ubayi. Uh, it, they're not identical, uh, but I, although, uh, you know, uh, Sadiqi does make the reference that it is possible that it is based on Ibn Masoud's, but you can see the style of Ibn Masoud's reading uh, is similar to the style. I just want to say the style, thematically speaking. Okay, um, Shoemaker, and I, I, we're going to get into this as we move into his whole promise and when he confronts the, and when he confronts the, uh, the radio carbon. Shoemaker says also that these instructions, what Hilali thought these were for students, no, these are instructions on how to sing, how to, if this is liturgy, how to recite the liturgy in a, a regular form. That liturgy were actually Christian texts that were then borrowed and brought forward. So he does refer to this later on. We'll get into that once we get to that episode. Right. I mean, which instructions is he referring to? The one by chapter 9? Is that what he referred to as an instruction? These instructions that you see that are on the lower layer of the Sana Manuscript. Well, there's only one instruction that I'm aware of. That instruction is what he's referring to then. Yeah, well, Dr. Poen will disagree with him because it's actually identifying the end of the previous chapter. That's another view, by the way. Just letting you know. Okay, yeah. interesting. All right, now what we're going to do now in the next episode is probably one of the most exciting ones, and that is the greatest manuscript that has appeared in our lifetime, and that's the Birmingham Folios. We've got to un unpack that one because, to me, that is the one the Muslims quote more than any other. And when are we going to talk about the dating also? carbon dating. We're going to talk about that later in the episodes as we go through with these. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for joining us. Tune in, of course, for the next episode. Until then, have a blessed day.